Tony was supposed to be here, actually. Uh, we got the comment from Wells right off the top. The boys are late. Tony Hero must be picking his outfit. Um, yes, actually, but we're not going to say why. Uh, welcome to the floor is yours. Uh, I'm here. Brian, that's me. Hi. Uh, Timmy's here. Sean's here. We're back. Um, I don't I don't think we did one last week. Uh, everybody was busy. It's been busy, but playoffs are coming. We have plenty to talk about. Time to and make that playoff, that playoff push. Yeah, yeah. As we speak, there are a bunch of games going on right now. Zion Williamson is headed to the locker room, so you already know things are things. However, are he did make his 65 game minimum. The most <laughs> games he's ever played in his entire career. The Nets are beating the Pacers right now in the fourth quarter in Brooklyn. What are, so, what are more disorganized? Heat fourth quarters or our openers? Uh, I no the heat fourth quarters <laughs> easily. Our our openers are organized to be this organized. You know what I'm saying? Um. Okay. So we're here. We're we're going to talk about uh, Joel and B, but we're also going to keep an eye on some of these games going on because we can react to uh, the standings live as they sort of take shape. I was just uh, mentioning this yesterday, but three to eight. In the Eastern Conference is a shit show, and really four to eight, four to ten in the Western Conference, maybe even three to ten. No, four to ten in the Western Conference is a shit show, and then one to three is its own sort of race. But you know, we'll see. Um, too early for playoff matchup stuff, but one of the guys that really impacts this, or maybe he does, maybe he doesn't to some degree. We'll see based on how these guys feel about it. But Joel Embiid, some people think that he's going to propel the 76ers to a dark horse run to potentially get to if not deep in the playoffs, straight up to the NBA Finals. As much as I like Joel Embiid, I don't foresee that. Sean, you're in Philadelphia. And yes, Chicos, we're going to keep, we're going to keep, we're, te- we're keeping tabs on all the games going on right now. Nets are up six, as I just mentioned. But Sean, um, does Joel Embiid have a dramatic impact on the outlook of the playoffs, let's say, given that he is back now he just had a pretty nice game against oklahoma city all things considered uh coming off the meniscus injury after about two months away yeah i mean certainly he does and and i i will say i did not get to watch a game i saw highlights i listened to a little sports talk radio today when i was in the car obviously philadelphia is not uh known for being the most realistic when it gets to those sports talk radios so you know, they're basically now Joel's back. We're going to win the championship. We'll knock out Boston in the first round, all those different types of things. Um, it's one of those things where it's, I think, unrealistic to think he's going to come back and be at the level he was playing at, which was like Wilt Chamberlain-esque efficiency scoring the ball. But if he gets in there and he can be efficient, he can be close to what he is, you know, at the MVP level, then, yeah, I mean, he he certainly, certainly, certainly – with Maxi healthy, with Tobias, if he can get it going, Buddy healed, obviously. They can get those pieces to fit together. You don't want to see, I mean, I know they have their history, but you don't, you're, if you're the Celtics, you don't want to see Joel Embiid in the first round. I would still take Boston, don't get me wrong, but like, Same. that's yeah. not the but team. I get what you're and what if you got Glenn Rivers looking across the sideline at his old team or his team looking across the sideline <laughs> at his hey Glenn? Oh my God, that is the storyline that I wish. I just hope that happens. I just hope that means that we're in the six so that we're not in the eight. I want Milwaukee and Philly. That would be amazing. Timmy, um, I my concern with Joel Embiid is, you know, big guy, seven feet tall, plus coming back uh, from a meniscus injury. And there's going to be a short ramp up period and then it's crunch time. They're likely going to be in the play in. If they lose to the Heat on Thursday, they will definitely be in the play-in. Uh, they could still actually avoid that if they get hot. And they have the easiest strength of schedule left in the NBA. But where are you at with Joel Embiid and his return and how that could possibly affect things going forward? I do not trust the doctor known as Dan Rivers. Um, the Celtics are uh, a legendary regular season team this year. Um, but I am... Um, I think if he doesn't go too hard, like um, I didn't get watched much much of the return game, but I see um, they won they won by four. Campaign had like 10, 10 and five. Like um, they have some interesting pieces. You still have Roko coming back, um, who's a you know veteran defender, good hands. 
they could really make it difficult for the Bucks. Like, I love Giannis, I love them, but Chris Middleton has been playing on one leg. Like, a certain matchup, a certain matchup, um, Nick Nurse is, we pray his spoke, but Nick Nurse, too, is a, is a, is a mad scientist. Like, he could, he could muck it up for someone in the playoffs. Um, and I think I saw a tweet today from, like, a Sixers writer who was saying, like, with the margins, Nick Nurse could win you a game the Duck would have lost you. Like, it's just, um, I know two weeks is no time. It's no time, but even just being his size, 7-2, to the touch, the jumper, the size. It's basically that they've been playing Bamba and Paul Reed. You know, they've had no size. They've basically just playing, they've been playing five wings all day. Um, I just think when the game slows down in the playoffs, um, it, it, I would actually not be shocked if someone goes down to the Sixers. Now, I don't have them going magically to the finals. I do think that um, Embiid is not, will not be back to 100% by then, but I think they can do enough to an uh, unsuspecting team in the first round depending on the matchup. I would not be shocked. That game tomorrow against the Heat is massive because if Philly wins that, they have a shot at avoiding Boston in the first round. I think Philadelphia, if you're Philadelphia, you'd probably rather play Milwaukee from a matchup perspective. Everyone, I think, is going to want Cleveland to some extent and maybe even Orlando to a lesser extent. But I think uh, with, with Joel Embiid, though, I I don't think he's going to tilt the power balance to the degree that some people are projecting where, like, my guy Matt Moore, who I work with, the Action Network, has... He uh, has the Sixers futures that, you know, he thinks that they can really make a run to the finals um, or at least a deep run in the Eastern Conference finals. I respectfully disagreed with him earlier this week. I'm disagreeing again. I I, I think Philadelphia, uh, their track record does scare me a little bit. I understand all the thought process of like, hey, they don't need to be, you know, the Cross team that they yeah, they don't need to be the team that they were before. They could be a different version of that because now they have a better supporting cast with Tyrese Maxey and you got the veteran leadership of Kyle Lowry. And then you have Buddy Heald, who's finally going to play in the playoffs in his career, um, who I think is the big winner in the Joel Embiid uh, return because now Buddy Heald could actually get some open looks from three. Um, I mean, he got some before, wasn't hitting them, but I think Joel Embiid will help that. He's been an exceptional passer. Uh, from the post this year so all that being said though i just is philly gonna win three playoff series i'm not sure i see that i think they could win one i think possibly two but it, it it's also like we have to see where they are coming away from the regular season because of where they're going to end up and if you look at their schedule again easiest strength of schedule remaining in the nba this season um Obviously, tomorrow's game not very easy. They're playing Miami in Miami. Miami is actually a better road team this year. Go figure. But after that, they're in Memphis, in San Antonio. San Antonio, not really a gimme this time of the year. I don't know if people have been paying attention. So there's that. And then they have home games against the Pistons. There's a road game against the Magic. And there's a home game against the Nets. So they could actually win out. <laughs> I don't think they will because it's the NBA. But they could actually win out if they win tomorrow. I know this is not an original concept by me, but it, it, with the play in now, is there an argument that that first and second seed, I guess really the first seed, should get to choose who they play? I I want that just for the drama. <laughs> you know what I mean? And can you like, imagine the, the the level of shit talking if you choose a team and they smoke you? Yeah. So like, all right. Let's so can we? Let's how would you? How would you frame it? Like, you can only pick from the two teams that qualify out of it, and basically the yes. other one plays the two seed. Yes. Or okay, yes. Yes. not yes. not extending Still, it beyond. No, you keep the plan as is, and then Boston, and in the Western Conference, whoever's the number one, um, it's gonna be one of they choose between Denver, seven, eight. Denver, Minnesota, Oklahoma City. Whoever's the one seed chooses between seven and eight, and then the other team has to play the second seed. Um. If Miami and Philly were seven and eight, who's Boston gonna be? <laughs> like that that would be hilarious to me. Um, well they have beaten um they have a better record against the Sixers in the playoffs. They, they picked the Sixers. 
But would you? Yeah, I think they would. Would too. you want to go against Joel Embiid if you could go against Miami, who has been you've beaten? They up have on nightmares, every Sean. Game? They have I, nightmares. That's the thing. But here's the thing: they should pick they from from a from a nut standpoint. They should pick Miami, right? Beat the team that beat you last year and that beat you a few years ago in the playoffs and has you two to one in playoff series over the last four seasons. On uh, this being the fifth season. And actually, even going back to like the LeBron era has a better record against you in the playoffs. Like they should do that. But from a basketball standpoint, it makes more sense to pick Philadelphia because there's something to be said for like Joel Embiid. You probably want him earlier in the playoffs because he just came back. And overall, like Miami's track record versus Philly's playoff track record of recent years, is just it's not comparable. So there's that. I want to see it happen, though. You don't have to say recent few years. They've made it past the second round once Ever. in the yes. last 40 years. Yes. So, Yes. The last time the last time Philadelphia uh, made it past the second round, I was I was definitely in elementary school. I was in, yeah, 2001. I was in grade five. I was in the first grade? <laughs> in the previous time, I wasn't born yet. 1983, I believe, is the last time before. Oh, I was. Um, my yeah. older sister wasn't even born yet. Like, what do we do? I don't even know. I, my parents that's, weren't even married. That's some different level of, of juju. I just don't think they will come this year. But I can see we get out of the first round for sure. The Celtics have won one title in the last 38 years, I think it is now. So you have like a whole, you have like however many generations at this point. You have dudes playing in the NBA who have seen the Celtics win one title. Actually, the majority of the league. And it's 2008, and we remember because they won't shut up about it. All right, moving on from Joel Embiid. Uh, what else is happening? So playoffs, we'll stick to that. We have the standings. Teams that need to finish strong. Well, <laughs> who else is really nervous over the Brooklyn game? On that note, uh, Orlando's beating New Orleans 82-70. to 70. That's an important one because Orlando currently has a share of fourth in the East. If they win, they'll be fourth by themselves. Um, did Brooklyn just hit a shot? This is going on. 110, 108. Dennis Schroeder, nice little jumper. Timeout, Indiana. I'm trying to go Nate, through all these. Nate McMillan or whoever their coach is is drawing something up. I don't, I don't know who it is. Zion Williamson has returned to the game, by the way. So there's that. So maybe New Orleans steals this late. I don't know. But – I don't have this is going to be on the pod feed tomorrow, so I don't want to piss people off too much with the previous night's games, although we are experiencing this in real time. Um, who is the team when you look at the standings more than anybody else needs to finish strong, in your opinion? Let's actually start in the Eastern Conference where we already were, but we'll go one through eight. Who is the team that stands out the most? And actually, two through eight because Boston doesn't really need to. Who is the team that mostly like needs to finish strong here and set themselves up for a nice playoff run? Who hasn't really gotten it together yet? Timmy. <laughs> I was like, who's gonna go first? Yeah, no, I, I was I was like understanding. So um, like I, I said, to call a name. <laughs> That's all early, early in the season, I, I thought the Knicks were gonna make a run. But like Hart said two nights ago, it looks like this is their team. No Ochino Randall, which leaves you with Precious, Michelle Robinson, Sherico Sims, Bogey. Um, Malachi Flynn is 50 points? Yes. What the fuck? Yes. There's only like seven Raptors playing tonight. <laughs> there's, there's only two players to score 50 points on the bench in this century. Him and J.R. Smith. The NBA is up All, right. All right, April stupid. I ho- I hope you I hope fantasy basketball players, I hope your season's done. Because I, I I like Sean actually won our league and I won the action network league, so we're champions here. I'm, and I'm, in, finished- I'm, I'm in the championship championship league now in my ESPN thing, and I'm up up five to zero. So looking good, looking good. Me and Sean both beat Harry uh, in the last couple of games of the season. <laughs> Grinded them out, too. That's just a no joke last week. I, w- I got third in our league because I, I was like, man, I'm at least going to place after being first in the regular season. Then everybody gets hurt at the end. Typical. So the Knicks, um, they're an interesting one because 
I don't know if they're actually going to get healthy in time at this point. It looked like earlier on Julius Randle should return at some point. Do you know that he got hurt like two weeks after, like like a week before Joel? Yeah, he got hurt against the Nets. Oh, He's, against the the Heat. heat. I was yeah, at the heat in Jan January 27th or whatever it was. And it was a dislocated shoulder. Typically, that doesn't take this long. It can, but now you're at the worrisome part where it's like, is this going to be one of these things? And I've actually mentioned this as it relates to Tyler Hero, interestingly enough. Is this going to be one of those things that lingers and then all of a sudden you look up and it's like, oh, surgery, season's over, we'll be ready for training camp, yada, yada, yada. Like, those injuries that are sort of, you know, they're going to be out for a period of time, but then they become day to day and then you don't get any real updates and they're not really practicing fully. And then all of a sudden there's a surgery. Like we've seen those in the NBA how many times at this point. I fear that Julius Randle and to actually a lesser extent Tyler Hero um, may be suffering that. And uh, I think that that could impact uh, on the Knicks point that could really impact their run. And then OG Ananubi has this weird in elbow issue. OG Ananubi, by the way, has missed roughly 30 games in three of the last four seasons each. So 30 plus, actually. So if they don't have those two guys, we saw what they look like. They're, not, they're just not going to have the offense to compete at that level. Maybe they could win a series, but I, I don't think they're going to make a deep, as deep of a run as I thought they would have. Sean? It's, it's unfortunate, but injuries are a bitch. Yeah, no, I agree. And and if you look through that whole stretch of basically three down, everybody's dealing with some sort of injuries, um, some more significant than others, at least over the last few months. Um, Nets up four, by the way, 26 seconds left. Uh, the team that I think, honestly, I'm, I'm kind of copping out on this. I think it's the team that gets the three seed. So I think it's more than – I think the Bucks are going to hang on to two, even though they're kind of slipping right now tonight. But the Cavs with the Magic, I think that confidence of them going in – the Magic being the team that really has never, with this group, been there before. It's been a while for them, right? Young group that's really not supposed to be there. Win the division, have confidence, go into the playoffs strong. If you're the three seed, you're away from Boston. You know, you, you still have to go against Milwaukee in the second round, but you avoid Boston. If that's, um, if that's not the uh, Magic and instead it's the Cavs, a team that got bullied last year in the first round, you get the three seed because you finish strong, they have a chance to get the two seed. I mean – they're a game and a half back in Milwaukee right now. Some teams playing, but like, wow, we were tied with Cleveland a few weeks ago. Like, that's where we could have been if you didn't have those slip ups. But I think between those two teams, because of the the situations they entered the season with, whether being young or whether being kind of bullied last year, those are the teams. And I agree with what was said about New York. They were a team that I really liked when OG first got there. They were physical. They were tough. They moved the ball. They played a lot like almost Miami Heat style basketball, tough, gritty defense with a lot of ball movement, a lot of guys could hurt you, but then the injury bug. And maybe that's because, you know, Tibbs plays them 52 minutes a game. That happens sometimes, I believe. So we'll see what happens. But I, I think we hit on the three people. And the obvious answer also, the Miami Heat, but that's we, the, get enough yeah. of that, we get enough of that content on this damn channel. So we're Yeah, we're yeah, like the Heat, are, the Heat are probably my answer here. Um I'll spend a couple minutes on it because it's what the people want, even though this is technically an NBA show. And I am somebody who covers the league nationally, but I will say this as it relates to the Heat. Like, yeah, they're the team because all season long, it's been weird. It's been weird that they're 42 and 33 and people are bummed out, and and which I understand because it hasn't looked pretty. But before the season, Sean, correct me if I'm wrong, we were kind of looking at this like a 45 to 47 maybe 48 win team. It looks like that's where they're going to be. Um, this is not how you draw it up, but you never know how you're going to get there. Like you just never know. And I thought that that would be enough to get them top five seed, probably in that four or five range. I don't know if you want that four or five because of Boston, but I'm sure that they feel like they can be Boston because they have a couple different times, but yeah, it's been weird. Um, Jimmy, I thought would have a bounce back game last night. And he did in the first half, and then he did not. Um, Bam has been – he's going to make all defense again. He's not going to win defensive player of the year because Rudy Gobert. And honestly, Victor Wembanyama might steal more votes now because of the shot-blocking numbers that he's having, and people are going to just vote for him. 
<laughs> for that. He's going to get on ballots for sure. But like, and then Terry Rozier, I noted this in the off the floor discord, like Terry Rozier is averaging basically 19, four and four since coming back from the knee sprain on 46, 41, 90 shooting 90 plus from the free throw line. Terry Rozier has been last 18 games or so. So he's been really good as of late and he's given them the best point guard play that they've had from a production standpoint since Goran Dragic. And that's important because what you saw last night against the Knicks, they're going to have to get those efforts from him every now and then those heroic ones, because Jimmy and Bam just aren't always going to have it because nobody always has it in the playoffs except for like Michael Jordan. So they're one. And then I think if you're Milwaukee, who right now is in a dogfight with the Grizzlies at home, <laughs> if you're Milwaukee, man, like you, you need to put a stamp on this regular season and head into the playoffs because it, the way this is shaken up, unless Indiana somehow finishes seventh, which I think if they're in the seven, eight and they're the seven, they could lose that game and drop to eight. But Milwaukee has to finish this strong, I feel like, because they're going to have a tough, tough round one matchup if it's one of Miami or Philadelphia, or if they even fall to three and somehow draw the Knicks, if the Knicks continue to slide, because that's not out of the realm of possibility either, because the Knicks do have some pretty stiff competition before the season's up. Sorry, I'm so focused on this Nets game right now. I didn't even I see. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> the Nets are up four with seven. So the Nets are going to win this game. I saw that the, the Pacers were winning by 12 at the end of the first quarter. Um, That's going to tie. That's going to tie the Heat and the Pacers. What's the tiebreaker situation there? Heat Pacers. I don't Pacers quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that we beat them one we played them back to back games in Miami and I feel we like we won one. we went one on one right yeah one on one and we sat out a bunch of guys we got like destroyed in one of the games I'll look, I have I'll it here it. yeah it's one and one so okay the tiebreaker will be Sunday God a couple massive games coming up that's a huge that's a huge game that's a huge game Woo. I think I think I think they have to win that game. They're going to lose to Houston. Like, I'm so betting against the Heat in that Houston game, especially if they beat Philly tomorrow. That's but don't they, when they play the, the Warriors, they, if the Warriors beat them, and they essentially out, aren't they? Who plays the Warriors? The Rockets. I think if the Rockets play the Warriors, the Warriors win. That kind of ends their hopes. Yeah, because Draymond Green, I saw Draymond Green said that. Yeah. Said, we want to end, end their season. Basically, um, yeah, that's tomorrow night, eight o'clock. Would so would um South South Carolina versus Caitlin Clark or uh, Heat Pacers be the bigger game on Sunday? What do you What do you think? <laughs> the Caitlin game. Yeah, I'm, I'm absolutely. I'll put right. it. On, I'll put it on the Iowa board. South Carolina gets on the big TV. Um, I will not be turning it off at halftime. I like some people. Um, okay, that's an that's a if you if you follow podcasting. <laughs> And watch the trip business versus the magic. Hey, I that dude has a good podcast, right? You generally. I just I didn't understand turning that game off. Yeah, that yeah, I didn't get it either. Anyway, I don't know what this shit is. Um, so uh, for audio listeners, I just got a bunch of balloons on my screen. I don't know why. Oh, the Nets won also. So there's that. And now the again, Sean, are you doing that? I am not doing it. <laughs> you have 500 people. We got balloons going up on the screen. Who knows what's going on? All right. On. Comments, questions, please, chat. Uh, give us those before we get out of here. We'll talk a little bit about the Western Conference. But and, comments, uh, questions man, on, on man. playoff stuff, on anything at all, don't care. We'll literally answer any question at this point. Um, so my, the Miami Heat are officially the sixth seed as of right now. Officially, yeah. official. Check back Sunday. Uh, Western Conference, real quick standings. Who's the team that needs to finish the strongest in the Western Conference? Timmy, is it? Let me see if I can guess yours. Is it going to be the Clippers? No, I think it's the Kings because if they don't, they don't make it. No. Oh. <laughs> well. Um. Yeah, it's the Kings, and they lost both their shooting guards. But it's basically put up a shut up time. I I saw Mike Brown said that Fox and Sabonis are basically going to be playing like forty minutes for the rest of the season. 
because the season's on the line. Yeah, so basically they're gonna they're going all in to stave off the rock the Rockets and the Warriors. And I don't know if they have enough, you know. <laughs> I assume. But yeah. That, um, I assume that no, it's not my birthday, Jose. Orlando looks like they're gonna beat uh, New Orleans. Uh, they're yeah. up fifteen with eight minutes. Uh, fourteen with eight minutes left. They just added another point there. Um, the Kings is an interesting one. Uh, it's so crazy. Last year they were the healthiest team, like against the whole league. They were the healthiest team, and this is just so quickly. You know, your your your, your uh, chances can change for all the doom and gloom about the Hornets and the Heat. You know, like you're, 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 go ahead, Brian. So that's something to watch with the Thunder. Because yeah, I, the, yeah, they, the Thunder are better than the Kings. Better than last year's Kings, this year's Kings, whatever. But that's something to watch with them because if you're in that one, it doesn't matter where you are in the West, your first round matchup is going to be tough. Yeah. Tough, regardless of who it is. Oklahoma City being the young team or whatever the case may be, I do not think they're going to the finals. I think they could lose in the first round if they get like a tough matchup because their conf, their record is beefed up by the fact that they they have had fortunate health. Very fortunate health this year. And like right now, they're, they're decked up right now. You have SCA and Jalen missed the game tonight, you know? So, and I don't think they're resting because they have a one seed to get. I think they're legit trying to like buy some time. So, you don't want to limp into the playoffs, you know? Sean, and then we'll get to questions. We got a couple, we got a few. So, we're definitely going to do that. Give us like two, three minutes. Get more questions in too before we get out of here. Uh, Sean, team in the Western Conference to watch is. Yeah, I've been starring them. So if you get them in there, we'll, we'll put them up there and we'll answer them. Um, I'm going to kind of go to the same route as I did before. You guys just talked about the one seed. So not so much Denver, but I think Minnesota and Oklahoma City, like if they can get hot and get to the one seed, I don't think Denver, I mean, Denver wants the one seed, but I don't think they're going to be uncomfortable if they're the two or the three. And then the same way, I think the Clippers are going to start to slip. So Dallas and New Orleans, who I think just lost, if they can push themselves up to four, not that you're looking for matchups, but just like the momentum of winning those kind of two different packs that are forming in the West. Um, I think that can carry them forward, but especially with uh, the two teams I talked about first, Minnesota, Oklahoma City, because they're young. Again, Oklahoma City, you know, kind of like the Magic. They haven't been there before. Minnesota's been there, but they haven't really gotten it done. Uh, still a young team. So I think that's where I would go in terms of, uh, you know, who needs to be, who needs to be the uh, team that gets hot. For me, it's probably New Orleans because <clears throat> they're losing at home by a lot as of this recording. Brandon Ingram is still out. He's supposed to be returning at some point. We don't know when. Um, the Pelicans are also now, after it looked like they were going to be very, very favorably positioned in the playoffs, they could slip uh, even further beyond six. They could actually slip into the play in here if they keep losing these games. And on top of that, they have one of the best five or six net ratings in the NBA as of a few days ago. So that's something that's going to slip after this Orlando loss. Pelicans have been really good over the last couple months or so uh, in totality up until recently. So we'll see. I think the Pelicans are a team that they size up with some others. and They're very dangerous. Like, I love their depth. They can beat you in a lot of different ways. I don't like that Willie Green insists on playing the small ball lineups sometimes coming out of the uh out of the half where he plays Larry Nance Jr. starting at the center position in third quarter over Jonas Valanciunas to try to get that small ball look. I do not think it's yielding the results that he believes it it does. Um and I think you're gonna need an ass kicker down low like Jonas Valanciunas in the playoffs. It, it was especially befuddling when a couple nights ago they played against Yusuf Nurkic and Yusuf Nurkic got 19 and 19 and Jonas Valanciunas uh, was limited to just 24 minutes. And there have been games where Jonas Valanciunas has been limited to 18, 19, 22, and 21 minutes and things of that nature. So, yeah, the Pelicans are the team for me. And also Dallas, I, I've i been high on them since the trade deadline. I think they can make a serious run. And I would, I would be tempted to pick them to beat anybody in the Western Conference outside of Denver in a series so long as they stay healthy, so long as the role guys continue to play at the level that they've been playing mostly uh, two-way guys as well. Like they have, this is the best team that Lucas had. I feel like this is probably the best team that he's had in terms of a complete team. Um, and that's a lot for me to say because Timmy knows how I feel about Kyrie Irving, but at the very least, he hasn't been a distraction this year. And when he's played 
and focus on basketball. He's been good. Um, the people in Dallas seem to like him, as in the reporters also haven't had any issues with him. So maybe he's he's finally uh, matured a little bit. Uh, that's a joke. All right, questions. Let's get to some before we get out of here. Chico seventy seven is Tyler back before the playoffs. Um. Now, if you asked this a month ago, I would have said, "Yeah, yeah, you know, sure." Now, if you're not back now, then I'm not assuming that you're going to be back. I uh, I don't know, I don't know. Timmy, you don't seem to think so. No, I mean, for what's the, the season ends next week? Like, what are we doing? What are we doing? Like. <laughs> Like he's not doing full contact practice. The season literally ends in like what ten days? Like no, please. You know, like I, I, I think if you can, you can come back. He can come back in between the first, first round, second round series. Like sure, you know, like sure. But if it, this is this is the third straight year. Remember, two years ago, he got hurt. I think it was the Boston series, and he didn't play a few games. And then the very last game in Game Seven, he hardly played at all. Um, was dealing with an injury, I think, in the Sixers series before that as well. And then last year, we know what happened. So um, Chico said Tyler is wearing Air Forces in practice. Look, I said, I asked Ethan when we had him up here a couple weeks ago where I was like, is this going to be one of those injuries that we look up one day and all of a sudden it's like, oh, Tyler Hero has successful surgery. He expects to be ready for the start of 2024 training camp. And he didn't rule it out. So... Sean, you don't think he'll be back, do you? I treat Tyler Hero like Santa Claus. When you stop believing in him, you know, you don't know where the presents come from. So I think Tyler Hero is coming back right down the chimney for the playoffs. He'll be ready right after the play-in. <laughs> Six seed till we bleed. We are ready. Tyler will be ready for that first-round series. <laughs> Yo, Playing so all the like, hits. He, shooting he, all the mid-ranges. <laughs> Jose said he, Jose said he can be a good help from the bench. That was his best role. And then Welsh says he seems like he's never on the bench either. Um, that's true. We haven't seen the fits. That's where you know that he's not uh, he's not ready yet. What other questions we got? Tyler Tyler's in the lab working on his uh his finishing package. He'll be back. He'll be back shortly. Okay. All right. What team? Oh, prefer team Magic or Cavs? Oof. I don't trust the, like the Cavs, but mm. I but I do think the youth of the Magic is easier to overwhelm. The, here's here's the sort of like the the yin and the yang of this with the Cavs. It's like yes, they're 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 kind of soft, and we saw what happened to them last year. But they did get the playoff experience last year, and they do have more of an offensive ceiling. The Magic will piss you off defensively like that team could defend to me Jalen Suggs should get more consideration for defensive player of the year but we're going to give it to Rudy Gobert because you know how that goes Jalen Suggs is really good and I think the magic as a team defensively is really good the reason why they're going to lose in the first round of the playoffs is because they can't score like <laughs> like they, they are in a regular season but in a playoff setting if they face a team like the Heat the Knicks whatever they're going to have a lot of the Celtics they're going to have a lot of trouble scoring the ball um and I think they're going to get back in the lab, add a guard who can finish, who can score in the offseason, sort of like help with that. But I, I think you got to take advantage of the youth and the offensive uh, offensive nature or lack thereof of the Orlando Magic here. I think it's them. But I think I think you can beat either team. You, you, I agree exactly with what you said. I wouldn't fear <laughs> playing the Magic, although they're a defensive uh... – Toughness is going to be hard. It would be – we would definitely be on NBA TV. I can guarantee you that. That would be the series that's going to be on that channel every single game. But speaking of NBA TV, the Bucks are going to lose to the Grizz. I think that's the second game in a row where they've lost to a bad team. So throw that out there. Um, are they really well, lose to the score? They're down 10 with a minute left. Oh, shit. And, and Dame is out, but Giannis is playing. Yeah. What uh, is well going says, what on is Sean's walking? favorite position wow. on the court? Pause. A hey, yo, not putting that in there. We can't talk about that. Be better. Better question, question here. We'll close with this one. Hamza Muhammad. 
Do you guys think Jimmy is better off guarding Brown and Bam on Tatum? Jimmy does a way better job on Brown than on Tatum. I know it's not likely this year, but he calls your shrug emoji. Um, if you're playing the Celtics, well, who's guarding Porzingis? Jovic? Like, you know, like, Sean, put your coaching hat on real quick. I don't think, I don't think you live with, I think Bam kind of has to take the Porzingis matchup, no? I would say yes. Because Porzingis is, is not only can he shoot the three, he can also bury you with the basket now. He used to be the guy that was afraid to go down there and couldn't finish down there. Now he's the guy that can bury you there too. Um, the problem is if Porzingis, I like having Bam on a guy where he can roam or Jimmy on a guy where he can roam. You can't do that against the Celtics. There's nobody to roam off of. I guess maybe Jalen, but Jalen shit, he's been playing as good or better than Jason has the last he's couple of you know. Yeah. So maybe it's maybe it's Drew Holiday is who you can help off of. But that's really got to be where you're besides White, your smaller guards go. Where do you put Duncan? Where do you put Terry? Like that's why that that matchup is just very problematic for everybody. Yeah, not just in my yeah. Opinion. Yeah. Terry, Terry's gonna get some Derek White and Drew Holiday. Um yeah, that's a tough one. I feel like Bam kind of has to get the Porzingis matchup by default because I don't think you're gonna put. I mean, maybe you put Jovic on him, but I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't think Spoel's gonna do well, that. Well, for what it's worth, the Celtics has clinched sixty wins on the record for the entire playoffs. This is going to be so monumental if they get beat. Like I don't think we've ever seen slander this level if they if they f this up. The last team in the NBA to win the championship after having the best net rating in the regular season is 2016-17 Golden State Warriors. So the Celtics, who lead the league in net rating by a lot, they've also been there the last couple of years. Like They've had a really good net rating, like top of the league, but they haven't gotten the title. So it's been seven, eight years since the leader in net rating ended up winning the championship. And my theory for that is because you're whooping so much ass in the regular season, you don't really have a ton of close games. And where we worry about the Celtics is in close games. So if some teams could muddy it up and get them in close games, maybe their front running asses won't win a championship. Do we have another one to take us out? Do we have another question to get us out of here? Did you star another one from before or no? I got a good I got a good comment, not so much a question, but we can go to this Jeez. to close it. Some spaces, please. Robin Shaw says Sixers stink. Nobody playing. Joel, Maxi, Tobias, Mo Bamba. <laughs> well, it's actually it actually says Mo Bamba in one word instead of Mo Bamba. Give them gentlemen brooms. We've been winning big by 40 over the Cavs, Knicks, beat the Bucks, Heat and Boston. We're going for the blood. All right. Um, listen, Mo Bamba, yeah. <laughs> We should be calling him that tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be doing post game with Greg. <laughs> Remind me to drop a Obama in there. I hope we're doing it live, and we'll see if the Heat win that game. That's the biggest game of the season, and then Sunday after that will be the biggest game of the season. We'll see y'all next week. <laughs>